Well, uh, hello. Uh, again, this is uh, your professor, uh, Dr. Paul Morton, and uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, covering the um, uh, Unit 10, and I'll make sure the PowerPoint slides are uh, loaded onto Blackboard. So it would probably be smart for you to uh, make sure you can see those slides um, and follow along with me as we go. Um, so let me just pause a minute uh, and give you a chance to get those all set up. Okay, hopefully you have your slides in front of you and you see unit 10. And then we'll move right on to the first slide. Which talks about uh, that this is the introduction to, uh, to uh, VHDL. So uh, VHDL just stands for um, Very High Speed Integrated Circuit Hardware Description Language. And uh, the term hardware description language, or HDL, is a, a very generic term and one you should be familiar with. We use, uh, we use this term to describe uh, uh, a couple of main languages and then several evolving languages, all of which are used to uh, design <clears throat> digital hardware these days. And these hardware description languages work uh, by allowing you to type in English language expressions to describe the, the, the digital hardware you're trying to design. And uh, this is a tremendous advantage. I know I've talked about this uh, at least one lecture before. And I, I've tried to make the point that when we have devices which have maybe um, almost a billion or more transistors in them, such as a large uh, Intel chip that's on your laptop or desktop, uh, or a number of other very, very complicated large integrated circuits, uh, that a task to, uh, uh, to put that much circuitry together is so daunting to try and do it with a schematic as to be virtually impossible. I mean, a billion transistors in a schematic, can you imagine, uh, in all the various ways in which they're connected? So clearly we have to, uh, we have to, boil this task down into something a lot smaller. And for that reason, uh, it's ab absolutely essential uh, that we, um, uh, that we have a uh, English-based language tool to allow us to describe these things at a very high level. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, how we can describe combinational circuits. We're not gonna get into uh, the sequential circuit design part yet. We'll, we'll finally cover that later in the course. Um, we're going to talk about uh, how you would design a simple combinational circuit, and then we'll talk about models for multiplexers for a 4-bit adder. We'll talk about some of the uh, operators, uh, constants, uh, how we describe signals, uh, and, uh, and how all that's put together. All right, so the next slide, uh, which would be slide 3, Uh, says what is a hardware description language. We've actually seen this slide before and basically uh, there are two main HDLs, VHDL and Verilog. Uh, and then there are some new languages evolving uh, as sort of subsets of these like System Verilog and some other things and even one called System C. Uh, but they haven't really uh, found themselves in, in uh, common usage yet. Uh, and these languages, as I mentioned before, uh, they're very similar to computer languages, standard computing languages like C, uh, but they differ in that uh, they allow you to, uh, to describe uh, things that happen simultaneously and also things that have um, uh, timing delays associated with them so that we can actually simulate uh, a logic circuit. So that's very important and, uh, and is very helpful. Uh, The, uh, the, the next slide uh, is, uh, so uh, 
normally the way we do designs using these hardware description languages is to break the design down into uh, modules and then we develop uh, we uh, work out all the bugs out of a particular module and then we slowly build these up into a, a large system that becomes say a, a, a single integrated circuit um, uh, the advantage of this is that it allows us to simulate smaller parts and then simulate the whole thing together it also allows us to use our smaller parts to reuse our smaller parts in other designs and um, and it allows for us to to put together a number of these modules and build up a very complex system in that process um, the other thing that's very helpful is that we can create an additional feature which we call a test bench where we can actually simulate uh, the design uh, in this test bench which is just some more uh, software in, written in the same uh, HDL language uh, and we can actually simulate our module so we know that uh, that it's going to work do functionally what we want it to do but also that uh, it'll also allow us to measure uh, the events that happen in, in a real-time setting where we have built-in uh, propagation delays and transport delays and other timing events so we can actually see if we do have uh, timing closure if we have uh, things happening fast enough to run the clocks at the speed we want to or if the time involved uh, uh, causes some signal to be delayed in its arrival and thus giving us a false result so uh, these test benches are a very important part of the entire process of making an integrated circuit or uh, a bit file to, to uh, program a, uh, a programmable logic device um, <clears throat> so so the next slide slide uh, uh, actually I skipped one here let me back up so uh, no I guess I didn't so that was four so now you should be on slide five so the way we uh, break this down we normally talk about uh, three different levels of description behavioral data flow and structural now these are not um, these are not uh, etched in stone there's some uh, there's some um, uh, interplay between the different distinctions and and to some extent they're 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 not as clearly defined as perhaps we would like um, the uh, what we find out is that that we normally try and describe things at a very high functional level we'll call it behavioral so the example of this would be uh, a plus B equals s uh, we haven't specified how many bits how many bit wide uh, these variables are they could be you know four bits or they could be 64 bits so uh, so that's that's something we've left out we'd have to come back and fig figure in later uh, and we haven't described whether we would do it with AND gates or gates and inverters or whether we'd use NAND NAND setup or NOR NOR or some other combination of gates um, and uh, there's just a lot of features that haven't been described uh, then usually what happens is once we simulate the design at this high behavioral level and see that we're getting the functional result we want then we add more details to it and it becomes a more of a finalized design uh, uh, as we add details then we we get into what's called the data flow level now we're talking about um, how many bit wide things are and and adding in some details uh, and then and then finally when we begin to describe what kind of gates and, and the exact uh, technology we want to use now we're more down in the structural level and at this point uh, somewhere in here we allow the, sim the, the synthesizer that's part of these big hardware development uh, environments to uh, to go ahead and generate the complete net list uh, generate all the various uh, um, uh, uh, photo masks and steps that we need to take to actually go to the foundry and make a chip um, and and that get, brings us to the physical implementation uh, which which is will have a real part in our hand or if we're using a programmable logic device then it would give us the bit file to download into the programmable logic device to configure it to become the hardware we want to, we want it to be and so uh, so that's how these things work um, If we go to the next one, uh, we see that there's a history of this, and that it's uh, evolved through a number of IEEE standards. Both uh, the VHDL world has, and also the Verilog world has. Uh, 
And if we uh, see that uh, in slide seven, we see that uh, uh, Verilog uh, is not covered in the text, uh, but it is actually in greater use in the United States for integrated circuit uh, 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 construction. So most foundries are using uh, VH, uh, Verilog generated uh, uh, files to actually uh, uh, do the, 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 the creation of an integrated circuit. Um, this came from the C language uh, and Cadence design system, which still makes um, many of the tools for developing integrated circuits uh, in their big uh, integrated development uh, suite of software. Uh, acquired Verilog in 1985 and uh, and they've been expanding its development and and uh, improving it uh, ever since and they're one of the major players in this so the nice thing again is that a lot of if you look at slide eight a lot of these uh, designs are reusable and uh, that really helps us so if we move on and we can see a, a what we've actually looked at before. If we just take a simple circuit in slide nine, and we see uh, we have an AND gate feeding into an OR gate, A and B going into the AND gate, and then the output of the AND gate being signal C going into an OR gate with another signal D. Uh, we, can, we can model this by saying that C is replaced with uh, a ANDed with B after five nanoseconds. So now we're saying that the propagation delay through this AND gate is five nanoseconds. And then we're saying the signal out of the OR gate, E, is a result of C ORed with D after five nanoseconds. So again, we're, we're showing that the, the, uh, the propagation delay through the OR gate is also five nanoseconds. Now, if you look just to the right, you can see we have uh, a, a sine C, pound five equals A ampersand B, and uh, assign E uh, pound five uh, C equals ampersand uh, C bar D, which is ORing. So we use instead of the words AND in, very, in, in VHDL, we use in Verilog the ampersand for AND. And uh, in VHDL, we use the word OR for ORing. But in, uh, in, in a Verilog, we use the vertical bar, uh, very similar to uh, the same uh, operators we use in the C language. Um, <clears throat> and that's because Verilog uh, comes out of C. Um, and you can see in both cases we're able to specify these propagation delays of five nanoseconds. <coughs> now you can see if we look at a multiplexer uh, that there are uh, three different ways to model a multiplexer here in uh, VHDL. Uh, you can note the first line F is assigned the result of uh, not A ANDed with I0 or A ANDed with I1. So that's one way. Or you can see this assignment statement F is assigned I0 when A equals 0 else I1. That's another way. Or you can use this cell uh, statement. Uh, cell uh, is assigned the value of A. With cell select F equals I0 when cell is 0 and I1 when it's 1. And so that's another way. Whereas, uh, interestingly, in Verilog, uh, you can see uh, that we have uh, uh, assigned uh, F equals cell question mark I1 colon I0. That's the question mark colon construct that's also legal in, 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 uh, in the C language. Uh, and then you have assigned F uh, not cell ANDed with I0 or a cell ANDed with I1. Uh, or you can use uh, the code that's in red there uh, in a, in a uh, always block. Uh, this is actually for a 4 to 1 mux, but the same idea. And you can see we define some signals, register, Q, uh, and then select, which is 2 bits, and wire D, which is 4 bits. Uh, so it's D0, D1, D2, D3, and it's select 1, select 2. Uh, uh, select three or sorry select well it selects two bits so it can have a value of zero one two or three and you can see we'd use four if statements if select equals zero then uh, then Q is assigned a value of D0 if it's equal to one and so forth so you can see that's much more uh, like a C language uh, like C uh, like writing it in C would be um, 
All right, if we go to uh, slide 12, you can see that uh, we use this assignment statement in Verilog, we put the signal name, we put this, uh, this left bracket, equal sign, and then the expression. And then, in, and then you can have a keyword after, and you can specify the propagation delay if you want to put that in. In Verilog, we do the same thing, only uh, we use the keyword assign, and then we have the signal name, whatever you might have created. Uh, then we have this pound delay, which is your propagation delay, or we call it a, a inertial delay in Verilog and then that equals some expression. Um, what's interesting about these assignment statements is they are continuously uh, scanned for execution and they will always execute instantly as soon as the right side changes. So if any of the, the signals in the expressions change then the uh, new value for the uh, assigned signal name will be uh, will be generated and, and assigned. So these are these are happening concurrently all the time simultaneously, which is not something that happens in a normal computer program. In a normal computer program, uh, the, the statements are executed one, two, three, and so forth in order. But here, the statements are executed simultaneously, so it actually doesn't matter what order you even write the statements in. They will all happen at the same time. And this makes it, uh, this, this is how we design real hardware, because of course if you had actual AND gates here and OR gates, they would be operating continuously. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're, we're designing actual hardware. So you can see on slide 13, this is the example of, of the HDL module. And we have covered this briefly before. We have this uh, two-part description. The first is the entity, which uh, gives us this, this port list. And then uh, this tells all the signals that are, are, are available to the outside world. Uh, and then we have an architecture description where we uh, declare what's actually going to happen inside the module. And, and, uh, and uh, it references the entity so that, it, so that the port signals are always the same. Um, and, uh, but then it describes what actually happens to the signals inside the module, whether we're going to have an adder or a comparator or, or what, what's going on. Okay, if we look at uh, slide 14, this gives an example of, uh, of a, uh, first the entity, uh, <clears throat> uh, and, then, uh, then the, and then in Verilog though, we just have uh, the module name and the signals that are coming into the module uh, in, this, uh, what, in this port list that's, that appears next to the module name. So we don't have a separate entity description like we do in VHDL. For Verilog, we put it all in one one um, one uh, module description, and then um, you can see then in the uh, in VHDL we take the uh, the entity. Uh, in this case, it's a full adder, and uh, and so we're going to describe uh, first the port list in the entity uh, description. Uh, in this case, we have an A, a B, a C in, and uh, a sum and a carry out. So this is a full one bit adder, one bit of A, one bit of B, one bit of carry in, and we're going to generate one sum bit and a carry out bit. And these are all specified as standard logic uh, descriptions, which which are uh, fairly well defined by IEEE standards for this language. Um, and they can only assume certain values. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then we define the architecture where we show how these signals are actually used. Some is just A exclusive ORD with B exclusive ORD with C in. Now here we haven't specified a propagation delay. And then carry is just A ended with B that ORD together with C in ended with e either A or B. Using parentheses here to, to uh, establish order of precedence. Um, the same thing um, the same thing, uh, again, we have uh, uh, some, of the syn so some of the syntactic rules we have. We, uh, we have to define the entity and the architecture. Our signals, uh, our internal signals within the uh, architecture description uh, don't have input and output or bidirectional modes assigned to them. But all the sin signals in the port list, both in, in Verilog and in VHDL, 
uh, do have uh, a direction. They're either inputs or outputs, or they can be in-outs, which makes them bidirectional. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the concurrent statements, uh, order doesn't really matter, uh, and they just, uh, they, the, uh, but we normally do specify delays associated with these, um, and they're not case sensitive. They can be a single bit, or they can be a, a, a vector of a number of bits, or they can actually be defined as integers. Um, uh, when we get around to talking about uh, the sequential use of these uh, uh, hardware description languages, then we'll talk about a process block or always blocks, things like that. Um, <clears throat> so if you look at slide 17, you'll see that we have what these standard logic values are. There, again, there's in VHDL, there, there's nine defined values. Some of them we don't ever use, really. Uh, but the ones that are really we're most interested in are the first five, uh, U, X, 0, 1, and Z. And they stand for uninitialized, that's the U, unknown, which is X, uh, logic 0, which is false, logic 1, which is true, and then the high Z or disconnected state. In, uh, <clears throat> in uh, Verilog, we only use the first four. There, uh, we only use four of them. And the four we use are X, 0, 1, and Z. But we in, very, in, in VHDL, we add to that this U for uninitialized. So, we, so in, in uh, VHDL, we differentiate between unknown and uninitialized. But in Verilog, we don't. And um, so that's the last slide in this, in this group. So uh, I'm going to make this video fairly short. Uh, so I, uh, I recommend you read through the chapter on uh, hardware description languages. What I'm normally going to do uh, on the next test, I'm going to give you a very short problem. Uh, and usually it's a, uh, often it's a, it's a uh, um, sometimes I'll describe a, uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, say a multiplexer, or I might describe uh, just a very simple circuit. Um, and uh, then you have to uh, look at that and decide, uh, be able to draw that from the VH, uh, VHDL description. And if you can uh, uh, draw it from the VHDL description, then that's, that's really all you have to do. And it's, it'll be a very simple circuit. So, so this isn't really, um, shouldn't be anything that you have to worry about. As long as you read through the chapter and you just uh, looked at these slides, uh, this should all make sense to you. But if you have any questions, I'll definitely be available uh, during uh, office hours time tomorrow uh, from 2.30 uh, to, uh, I think it's from, yeah, 2.30 to uh, 3.45, something like that. Um, and then I'd like you to make sure you, uh, you uh, there'll be a little quiz online associated with this uh, video, which you should also fill out. And I think I'm going to, uh, stop at this point. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, uh, you can uh, send me a uh, an email, or you can uh, uh, tune in. Hopefully, I'll be able to figure out the office hours and uh, have uh, an interactive uh, meeting uh, tomorrow afternoon.